I've said it before, as a company, I think Omega is in a bit of a state of disarray at the moment. Fortunately though, despite this organizational disarray, they still managed to launch good watches. One of those watches, which is not just good, but great, is the Aquaterra's Shades models. These watches are ridiculously cool. And if you're in the market for a steel all-rounder sports dress watch, you should stick around to get to know more about this model. Let's get the basic specifications out of the way. What you have here is the Omega Aquaterra Shades Edition. It's a 38 millimeter watch with a lug to lug of 44.9 millimeters and a thickness of 12.3 millimeters in an all steel case. The case is your signature Aquaterra twisted lug construction that you'll also recognize in the Seamaster 300 and the Moonwatch. You get 150 meters of water resistance and Omega's 8800 movement. It's got a 55 hour power reserve, Metis approved movement with 15,000 Gauss anti-magnetic resistance and all the other technical Omega movement bells and whistles. You get a steel three-link bracelet and a choice of five different color dials. Without any hyperbole whatsoever, this is the best Omega bracelet they have made in years. Here, Omega sticks with the three-link bracelet, but have lowered the height of the individual links. What you get is a look that reminds me in some ways of the light play you get with a Jubilee bracelet. It's a more refined and classy look, but with still a three link approach instead of five, you get something more visually distinct. In some ways it has something in common with the Rolex President bracelets you'll find on a day date. It still has polish and shine, but the proportions of the end links just make for a much prettier look. This bracelet design contributes to two other positives as well. It wraps so well around the wrist. Secondly, because of those lower links, you get an almost seamless curvature. Nothing sticks out, no sharp angles protruding anywhere. So it feels good, it looks good. It has no quick adjustment, which I know is a gripe for many these days, but instead you get a closing mechanism that looks good and is on par with something you would find on a good integrated bracelet design. The Aquaterra case is a bit of a weird one. On the surface, it's this interpretation of those aforementioned twisted lugs surrounding a standard rounded case with a slightly pronounced bezel. It's similar to an Oyster Perpetual or a Datejust, you know, without the fluting, but in the 41 millimeter version, it has always come off as a little bit more manly than any comparable Rolex. Two things contribute to this, the bezel and the signature lugs. The Datejust or OP and the AT41 on paper at least should wear the same. They're both 41 millimeters, they both have 20 millimeters lug spacing and both clock in at about 47.5 millimeters or thereabouts in lug to lug, but they don't. The Aquaterra bezel is thicker and taller than an OP bezel. The overall watch is more than a millimeter taller. The lugs with those signature curves and because of those signature curves makes the lugs look more chunky and therefore they look shorter. This overall makes the center dial area feel more pronounced and more protruding. At 41 millimeters, that looks really good, but the Aquaterra case, in my opinion, is not a case that scales well. At certain sizes, it starts to look a little chunky. Again, the range you can size an oyster case up or down where it still looks good and well proportioned is quite broad. You just can't do that to the same extent with the Aquaterra case. The 38 millimeter, however, is, dare I say it, near perfect. The proportions are perfect. It's a present watch, but also way more elegant than the 41 millimeter. It sits perfectly on the wrist and with 44.9 millimeters lug to lug, is going to fit so many people. With those twisted lugs and a little bit of height at 12.3 millimeters, it doesn't wear small. Whatever you lose from the downsizing is offset by that extra presence. Comparing to the other Aquaterras, including the regular 38 millimeter, this case is high polish all Around. It's overall, for lack of a better word, shinier, which makes it together with that presidential-esque bracelet much more of a statement piece than the normal 38 millimeter. It's not going to be as rugged and hard wearing as a 41 millimeter, but to me, that's a direction I actually kind of like. No teak deck for you. A key signifier of the Equaterra 41 is that signature teak deck design, which has always looked good. Not so on the 38 millimeter. It's sun ray all the way. The colors pop, especially in the turmeric or gold and the blue, in my opinion. The arrow applied markers and arrow hands add to the presence of the watch and the date window at six o'clock that although isn't color matched, has a trapezoid shape with a white steel rim, which is omitted on the current 41 millimeter versions and the non-shade 38 millimeter version. Overall, you get a gorgeous look, a no noticeable look and as opposed to some of the 41 millimeter models, a dial that isn't quite as busy as the teak deck and other pattern dial variations you get across the range. By toning back the dial texture, you get something a little more easier to style and an overall more harmonious look. In my opinion, the stars of the show are the green and blue models, which are not your classic navy and forest green, but rather slightly desaturated off-center colors. The red is by far the most eye-catching, but a bit too much to my taste. The gold definitely has something going for it and the last sand whitish version is a bit forgettable. I personally would have liked to see a sunray gray. I think that could be absolutely stunning. Maybe in the future, I suppose. 
The most direct competitor to this watch would be the Oyster Perpetual or the Datejust. The Datejust is more expensive, but it's on the list because it has a date window. And Oyster Perpetual in 36 millimeters has a ton of dial configuration similar to the Equaterra. The main difference to me though is the almost deliberate over-refinement of the Oyster Perpetual. The OP Oyster case with OP baton hands and markers is more simple, more appealing, more middle of the road compared to the Equaterra. The Equaterra in 38 still has some of that aggression and power from the 41 meter model, but in a tad turned down version where here where I think it works really well. To me this means that the Equaterra 38 isn't a, just a fallback option for someone that can't get an Oyster Perpetual. It's a standalone option with very much its own look. Then you have something like the Nomus Club Sport which is in many ways an affordable interpretation of the Oyster Perpetual. The Nomus Club line is a general favorite of mine but like I said before it's 42 millimeters it's too large the lug to lug is over 50 millimeters and though although really well put together isn't finishing wise as intricate as the Equaterra. And I IWC Mark 20 is a more old school and serious version of this kind of watch, but is definitely a comparable option. Basically, there's a ton of options in this space and below. Some would also likely consider this Aquaterra versus an integrated bracelet sports watch like the CW12. And although I like the 12, I've just concluded that a person looking for an integrated bracelet design is not going to be convinced by an OP, a Nomos, an IWC, or this Omega. I've had a hard time finding issue with this 38mm Equaterra Shades Edition. The bracelet is excellent, the proportions are excellent, the dials are stunning, and as usual the movement is, if not the best movement out there, it is a class leading one. Not the best Omega, but a good one. In my mind, it's the best current iteration of the Equaterra line, which is probably where my more conceptual and principled gripes lie. My fear is that these shades are a short-term talking point in the larger Equaterra lineup. A series of watches that will be here for a while and then be replaced by some new different interpretation. For Omega, I think they're seeing a lot of other Equaterras sitting on the shelves gathering dust and their default solution to that problem is expanding the range through the releases like this Equaterra shades. Sales drop, Omega goes and expands the range. The consequence, you have 41 millimeter, 38 millimeter, 38 millimeter shades, Tokyo edition, golf edition, small seconds, world timers. The thing is, Omega has to build all these watches. They need to build the 41 millimeter, 38 millimeter, specific dials with specific markers and dial windows for the 38 and 41. They have to have all these configurations available and it's all complicating their manufacturing process. And I think the ultimate consequence is this. The green and blue shades are by far the most popular ones and are consistently sold out. Rolex is sold out because everybody wants anything they will sell. The Omega Shades Blue is sold out, I think, because Omega is too busy producing teak deck white combo sand small second styles, and I don't know how many bracelet and strap options. Secondly, I have a huge issue with pricing. A regular 41 millimeter Equaterra costs you 5,000 US dollars. A regular 38 millimeter men's Equaterra will set you back $5,900. What does the shades cost? $6,300. $400 more than a regular 41 millimeter Equaterra. Why? The 41 millimeter has the better movement. The Equaterra has more material in, in the 41 millimeter. The Equaterra teak dial can't possibly be cheaper to make than a Sunray dial. The pricing is wrong and it's inconsistent. It also annoys me to no end that just because of these dials, I have to pay more. Why? Because it's being treated like a special edition or something? Does it need a display case back? No. It's a great movement and Omega has pretty much decided that whenever they can show off their movements, they will. But if putting a regular case back on could shave off two or three millimeters of case height, I'd see that as a welcome addition. Omega very actively pushes alternative bracelets and straps. At the time of writing, they have over 120 different options to choose from that you can buy directly online. But here's a question for you. Since Omega actively wants you to buy an extra strap and customize your watch, how come not a single watch that I can think of has a quick release strap system? It makes no sense. Of all the companies out there offering different straps, it should be a no brainer that all bracelets are quick release. So you don't have to scratch your watch with a pointy spring bar tool. The Aquaterra Shades is the best Aquaterra at the moment. If you thought the AT41 was too chunky or too manly, the 38mm has you covered. It's by far the best proportioned Aquaterra out there. If you thought that the teak deck or small seconds implementation was suboptimal, go for the 38mm Shades. It's by far the best looking dial. It has personality in spades. Those were my two cents. Tell me what you think. Like, subscribe. Cheers.